I believe we're recording. So hello, everyone. This is the Know Your Place podcast, and this is episode 76. And on here today, I have brought on a very special guest. His name is Shane Crow. Say hello to the fans, Shane. Hello, fans. <laughs> Glad to be here. Glad to be here. Welcome. Thank you for the invite. <laughs> and uh, Shane... Uh, Shane's a fellow co-worker of mine and he just really wanted to come on today and we're gonna we're gonna kind of dig into archaeology some I suppose is the broader topic at hand but uh yeah so uh I guess uh, if you want to just give a little little background about yourself and how you came across uh the uh Graham Hancock character and sort of I guess uh we'll put out there there's going to be a lot of discussion about what's truth and not truth in the archaeology community today. So uh, go ahead and uh, give a little bit of the intro for the crowd. Well, just uh, just a little background, background me. Uh, I'm originally from Texas, Houston, Texas, to be exact. And um, I kind of made my way about to Kentucky through, you know, different circumstances. I met my wife in college and we started having the babies and I didn't, I couldn't go back because, you, know, <laughs> you know, I was in Kentucky and once the babies came. <laughs> And so uh, I, I've been here since, what, 2003. And like I say, I have uh, five children and uh, I, I, I love outdoors. I love athletics. I love history. I love the anything that challenges the mind or challenges uh, what we were taught. Because uh, over the years, I've, I've always been a, a very kid that questioned things and wanted to know why. I was I was the two year old, three year old and said, why? Well, why? Well, why this? Well, why that? I was that person. <laughs> and so that kind of continued on through my adolescence as, as well as my, my teenage years and now my adult years. I still have that same desire to know. And uh, my motto is living to learn and learning to live. I feel like you need to be learning, living every day, but you shouldn't be doing it without learning. And so that's why I I've, I've really find myself having a liking for you, Charles, because you have that in you as well, because I, I learned something every day from you that I didn't even, wasn't trying to learn, but I learned, so. <laughs> well, and, inherently part of studying geography, and, you know, geography means the geography or the writing of, about or of the world, so inherently in that is a sort of questioning things and just looking at the world and learning about it and finding a new way to describe it in general. Exactly, exactly. And far as Mr. Hancock goes, Graham Hancock, um, let me let me back up a little bit. Like, yeah, like I said, I like to know. Take your time. <laughs> I, I like to know. So, you know, I have a good collection of books from different, you know, uh, genre, if you will, you know, information and just kind of well-rounded uh, African history, world history, you know, uh, geography, archaeology. I just like to know. And this was even before... Google and YouTube came out. I was actually a reader. You know, now I'm a slash reader slash YouTuber slash anywhere I could find it type of learner. Um, so I came across uh, Graham Hancock listening to Joe Rogan podcast. If you're familiar with Joe Rogan, he uh, kind of... It's real popular in the circle yeah. of the age. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of... You know, I was finding myself like, oh, that's the Fear Factor guy. Let me let me hear what he's talking about. And I was I was pleasantly surprised just the array of different things he exposes us to on his show. It's not about fighting or because he has background in that or, or the acting Hollywood world, but he had Graham, Graham Hadcock on there. And I was like, who's this white guy? You know, this nerdy looking white guy. I was like, let me listen to him. And he started talking about the pyramids. And that's like one of my fascinations. Like I've yet to go, but I hope to, uh, you know, before my passing that I'll be able to experience the pyramids. And he was talking about the pyramids and just the the amazement and technological advances that, that were done when they built that, that we can't explain today. And um, in particular, he was talking about um, that that area was once, once even though it's dry now, it was once like an oasis and it was just like water flowing. And it's hard to believe now as it right. is right now. But he started talking about the watermarks on the pyramid and, and how that showed it had to be in that. And that just kind of just kept me listening and listening. And I was just hooked on him until I bought this book that I'm reading now. Ah, yes. Of God. 
And I'm on this. I'm just on seven. It's a pretty thick book. I'm on seven. But like I said, uh, I've been kind of learning more about him to it kind of persuaded me or pushed me to buy the book. So that's that's just how I got to know about Mr. Hancock. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, you know, and I'm glad that you sort of turned me on to him. I've listened to several Rogan podcast episodes, but I hadn't really, you know, I hadn't heard of this particular guy. But I had the thing that I found really interesting, and I watched, uh, I listened to a Joe Rogan episode where he was talking about how there's now some evidence that the land bridge thing wasn't really a thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, I saw another clip of him giving a TEDx talk where he was uh, talking about a bunch of, I remember here I think it was uh he talked a little bit he was talking about Atlantis yeah uh, the question Mm -hmm. founding story of Atlantis and the thing that I just uh and this is sort of a larger theme that I'll kind of pull this back into generally but the thing that I just found so interesting about him and about is just like he's asking he asks you know just he's just asking questions and that like irks the archaeologist Mm -hmm. establishment Mm -hmm. right and that just and that's just sort of the thing that absolutely boggled my mind, right? Because when I was watching his clip on Atlantis that he gave on TEDx, and this is hilarious, right? So this guy, you know, so when you look him up on Wikipedia or somewhere, right, it says, this guy's a pseudoscientist, and there's all this criticism of him. Yeah. And then it's like, well, then why was he on TEDx and the BBC? Like, they had to corroborate this guy yeah. at some point, yeah. right? So yeah. then I watched the TEDx thing, and then they put a disclaimer on there. But then everybody's like, hey, that stuff ended up being true 10 years later. Exactly. <laughs> and, exactly. And, and he's like, just, he's like one of the, you know, uh, what you say, ugly duckling of the of his field. Right. You know, right. they know he's smart, he know he's short, but his he challenges everything of traditional thinking, you know. Right. And you know, I can really respect that in a way, you know. I had my I've had certain things before, you know, in different areas where it's been kind of like, you know challenging the thinking right. you know but mm-hmm. it was just it scares so people. I just found, it does scare people and i think the biggest thing that i did but again the thing that really boggled my mind about that is if the whole point of archaeology right is supposed to be the science of studying the prehistoric cultures or mm-hmm. whatever why would you want to stop asking questions at a point like just it eh, no, don't talk about that. Don't right. question that. Don't, you know, like, do you, do you not want to be funded anymore? That, I mean, it just kind of boggled my mind a bit because what you want to sit around the room all day regurgitating the same five theories exactly. that you came up with every exactly. 10 that you came up with a hundred years ago. Mm-hmm. I don't think that would not work in my field in geography. You know, somebody would definitely be like, what, like there's, there's so many theories that we've already like thought out. Like we're, like the big one in my community that people really fight about is whether or not there's this thing, and this kind of applies to archaeology too, luckily, is it's called uh, cultural predeterminism or environmental predeterminism, where, you know, okay, so your culture grew up in the ocean, so you have boats, or mm-hmm. like your culture grew up in the, and there's still a big fight. Like some people say, no, that does not exist. Mm-hmm. And other people are like, yes, that how can you deny that that exists? Right. Well, you, well, the thing about right, right Graham, yeah. you know, like you said, he asked the questions, but he's basing it on science. You know, he's not basing it on his emotion about it, what he's learning, or what what traditional science has taught him, or what he learned in school. He's just following the science and following the logic of it all. You know, for as far as how they created these things, like they weren't primitive as we as we try to try to think you know they were very well advanced for their time you know well and that's the other thing that i think is a real thing that we had that is just a real hard thing for people is shifting this narrative of like everyone pre my society was totally backward right right Mm -hmm. like Mm -hmm. and that's just not true i mean there's just we it's just advancement was in a different way we've done things in a different way Mm -hmm. like yes back then you know or even back in the 50s we couldn't be having this video call this way right Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean there wasn't other type of advancements that were, you know, very far along, you know, right? Like they just advanced in a different way. That doesn't even necessarily, we may find out in a hundred years that people consider this backward, you know, like, (laughs) 
And that's just, again, that's just what really shocked me about looking into this guy from the jump. Is just like, there's all these people out here that are just like mm-hmm. mad at a guy for asking mm-hmm. questions. Yeah. And, and what like, he talked about, he talked about that, like, like you said, some stuff that was occurring back then was advanced for that day. Right. But like he talks about, you know, how were they able to lift those big blocks up and just stack them perfectly like that? You and, know? They had and then he paired some. that with the evidence of giants in those times, you know? And so that would make sense, you know. And he's like, "Look, they got bones. They found bones here, giant bones, right here." He and he shows you where to find it, and it's public information, you know. So you're able to put it all together. And so, why would somebody want to cover it up? That's so interesting. That's so much we can learn and and understand from from that, you know. Yeah, and uh, the, I was I was glad that I just happened to stumble upon the Atlantis TEDx talk because that was. It was very funny because I had actually seen something, I forget where it was, I think it was in a paper somewhere where they discovered, I think it was an island somewhere off of Greece or somewhere, mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. that they, they now think may have been what Plato was talking about. Plato right? was we'll talking about, right. <laughs> And mm-hmm. it's just so funny in hindsight, watching this clip and then seeing the criticism of this clip and then now 20 years or however many years after that it was, they do actually have some evidence, and you know, and it's not traditionally what people thought it was necessarily. Exactly, they just thought it was just all imagination, right? Yeah. But it it definitely was like I, the the island, I, the evidence I saw it was like people had like four story buildings, right? In mm-hmm. in a prehistoric culture, so it definitely was advanced for that time period. Exactly, so, exactly. So, but I yeah. like I like him also about I don't know if you've seen the one with that about the Amazon. I, that was a, I saw part of that clip. I didn't get to watch all of it. And but. how and how we we don't even really understand the depths of the science and discoveries in, within the Amazon. Well, it's and just so. impossible, you know. You get in there, you know, and those people, you know, th- travel through. But I'm on call, man. But you know, call. Like that's a, okay. I can. They had a question this time. Wasn't no, wasn't no water flying nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, as a, as we were saying before, before we had to cut it out, uh, Shane was just talking about uh, the Amazon rainforest. And the problem is, you know, is people, you know, consider cultures backward or whatever, and they can't actually, like I said, there was no communication with the coast, you know. So we really don't know exactly mm-hmm. what they were doing in there, right? It's well, just like... Have, but you have LIDAR now. You right. with LIDAR. Now yeah. they see in towns and Water yeah. ducks and these people were more advanced than we give them credit for now because all the growth right. and everything didn't change in that landscape. You know, I just find that amazing. It's just, it's just amazing. <laughs> you know, like we think the world was this way, but they have a whole nother world they were in. You know. Yeah, and I, I, I don't know how much you've studied of the Aztec civilization. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, you know, they were another very sophisticated one. People really don't. You know, modern Mexico and, um, you know, sort of the mixture that's happened when the Spanish came over. People don't really understand. They were very advanced, the Aztec civilization. Mm-hmm. They, had, they had arguably like the biggest city in the world at the time, right. you know. And we just, we don't, people take so much for granted, you know. They, they just see stuff in a very narrow view. You know, there are things that I even still have a lot of questions about from our founding fathers era. That's really where I studied a lot of my history minoring was that era you know and i'm still i found so many crazy things that jefferson and benjamin franklin did that a lot of people don't talk about anymore and you know sweeping under the rug yeah <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah but, i can i can only imagine <laughs> so it's those really, walls to talk <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I, I guess is there uh if there's a place, where do you where do you think that um, uh, I'm sort of around this home? I like to keep these about thirty minutes or so, unless we just get on a really crazy tangent because I don't like to bore my listeners to death. Mm-hmm. But is there a where would you where where did you I guess you you sort of said you just started studying about you know you like to read and explore new avenues, but where would you say that somebody who's sort of less interested in things? How would you, what's your cell that they should start looking into this stuff more? For as a, as of geography and archaeology? 
archaeology and sort of like the the sort of the Graham Hancock thing where we're talking about like the questioning of the archaeology establishment, right? So like, okay, so somebody there are people in the archaeology establishment that don't like Graham Hancock, right? Mm-hmm. They think that they could. One of them called him a fraudster on television, right? Mm-hmm. You know, but why is it important in your opinion that people should question that kind of thing in that it's important to to sort of and we already hit on this a little but i'm sort of rounding this home a bit Mm -hmm. why do you think what would be your sell if you could have just a short sales pitch to somebody and say look this is why you need to look into this more and sort of keep a more open mind on this well because when when truth in short truth is trying when when you present it with questions i mean you present it with them you know like we, we started with the pyramids when you look at them you know, you automatically, how was this done? <laughs> you know, and you got to follow that no matter, wherever it take you. You know, you got to follow you. And, and my thing, you got to have, have a thirst for it. I, I'm not satisfied not knowing. I want to be able to understand. And especially when you, once you realize that sometimes this can be intentional, people intentionally mislead you and, you know, falsify things. That, that, drives you even more. Um, and so that's where it come from me, because I know history has been bit, bent, twisted, and, you know, kind of just ramrodded, if you will, uh, in, in the school systems. And it's not a black and white thing. It's just, we all, we've, we've all drank the Kool-Aid, <laughs> you know? Right. And that's the thing that I try and emphasize with people is because a lot of people see things in like a uh, a shorter view like i had another podcast that did probably it was like my 13th or 14th episode now but it was sort of a question of uh is there a world order was what our, the topic of that one was and in there i sort of hit on this thing again i said well there's always been a world order is the issue right it's just mm-hmm. you know there's some people that then take it to the other extreme of like you know there's dominating yeah you're right. And it's it's just it's always existed. And there's always an establishment in a world order. And that means that we have to take that with a grain of salt. Right. That, there, you know, uh, I don't necessarily believe everyone in a position of authority or in charge of anything is acting out of bad motives, per se, or bad faith. But you have to understand that they are entrenched. So like they, they are going to preserve their entrenchment largely. Right. Greed and power has been around before me and you, and it's right. going to be around after us. So, I mean, that's been the pretty much the main idea from it all, you know, yeah. greed and power. You know? Right. So when we're talking about this in the particular context of this archaeology stuff, it's these people have a vested interest in the archaeology status quo remaining. Keep it and, yeah. <laughs> and so they don't like the fact that this guy is questioning things, and it... it we got to we got to say, you know, well, maybe this, when he starts getting correct sometimes, then you got to just say, well, look, this guy's correct. And we got to stop mm-hmm. throwing shade at exactly. it. Stop whatever. But you you know? need people. You need those kind of people. And, and this is the first time something like this has happened either. Everybody thought uh, what it was. Galileo was insane. Right. At his time period. Everybody right. thought, oh, this guy's insane. Nobody believed what anything he did. In fact, there's still a small percentage of the population that still doesn't believe in his theories. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we just you got to not take it for granted. You really got to read into it yourself. And like I said, don't just get caught up in what. You know, research it yourself. Uh, and that's not to say, like I said, most of the time I don't believe these people are acting in ba- bad faith or even necessarily that these people are wrong, right? I don't necessarily, but there are time you just got to look at it really hard. And if something doesn't make sense to you, that's the time when you start looking into it more exactly. and reading up more. Not you got that, a question, not... <laughs> you got a question, you follow that question, wherever it leads you. You know, you're not wrong for that. If anything, if anything, you doing what you supposed to do because the creator gave us this brain. And so when your stuff start ticking, you know, you want to, you want to, you know, discover more, you know, my, my head is always ticking and I always want to know why. And I, I want to hear other people's point of view and opinions and, you know, it might change me, but it, it more it might enlighten me. I might not do anything, but I won't never know until I, you know, reach out to other people who have different of me, you know what I mean? Right. And I think everyone could do to do that. 
So uh, you got anything else you want to say to fans before we wrap up here? I think we've had a pretty good one. I actually think this will go pretty far. So, <laughs> well, 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 I, I love it, man. I love it. I love what you're doing, man. I appreciate the invite. And and hopefully we'll do it again. We'll we'll toss another topic out there. Yeah, sure. I'm always I'm always available. Although I have cut these back to more like once a month instead of every week because I just ain't got the time. But <laughs> hey, maybe, <laughs> anyway, we'll do from, say- maybe we'll do it from a, a place, a location somewhere. Yeah, nice there you ge- go. geographical location. We can yeah. we can. I'm definitely yeah. always a proponent of on site if I can find somewhere. So. All right, everyone. Uh, that everyone, thanks Jane for coming on. Look into Graham Hancock and sort of uh, not just him. Just you know, this is one guy we talked about, but the larger theory behind this here is there's a lot of stuff out there in archaeology now that has sort of been, I would say, been changing in the last twenty years. It's not just him. You know, I started hearing about that before you presented me with this one guy, right. and you know, it, it it does bear some more study. So really, look at some of the new stuff in archaeology if you're interested. And just remember, there is a core of the archaeologist establishment that doesn't like some of the new stuff that's coming out. Right, right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, you go, you can look up Doc Doctor Ben. He's a good one. Um, uh, hey, I ain't got the book over here, but um, Carter Woodson. Carter Woodson, I think that's his name. He's an Egyptologist. Egyptologist. Um, Graham Hancock. And Graham Hancock got a buddy. I forgot his name, but it's a bearded, bearded guy. I think you might have seen him on the podcast. I forgot his name. But he has his whole other story, a whole other lane he goes in with it. He's a good one as well. So just YouTube, man. YouTube's our friend. If we just want to know more, YouTube's your friend. <laughs> uh oh, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's guys. all about how you use it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, I'll go ahead and sign off here. And this has been the Know Your Place podcast. Yeah. yeah.